how are you all doing today? Um, so I guess I'm going to do this. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I was seriously considering uh, making this a regular occurrence, doing a little bit of an updates video every week, especially for the crafting, crochet, dyeing, wonderful things that I'm doing. Um, I'm thinking about moving this to a second channel, like creating a whole thing. <laughs> Uh, a whole channel dedicated to a weekly update video for my shop business and also just for the crafting community in general. Um, I've been super, super enjoying um, watching podcasts. I have loved watching the Die Another Day podcast, the Dyer's Notebook podcast. I've been binge watching those. I just started watching the Strings and More podcast, Yarngasm podcast. I've been watching, what's the other one? Inside number 23. Um, all of those are, you know, dyeing or knitting um, in general crafty goodness. Uh, I've subscribed to a few other podcasts that I'm trying to get a feel for and see if I would really like. I know they're called podcasts, so I suppose if you take the audio from these videos and put it on iTunes as a podcast, it would count as a podcast. I've always seen these as like vlog type videos or, you know, um, because I've been into the whole, you know, family vlogging community and I've been into like watching other types of vlogs like beauty vlogs or like DIY blogs or whatever. So I'm interested to do this. <laughs> Not only because, well, mostly because it's really fun. It's fun to put together these videos and it's fun to kind of show everybody what I'm doing and show kind of like an update and it also keeps me very accountable for the things that I'm creating. So if I have a deadline for myself that I'm trying to, you know, crochet something or knit something up that I actually do it by my deadline and I do it so that I can show it to everybody else uh, and not just have it for myself. So, um, yeah, if this is something you'd like to see, I'm seriously considering it. I'm doing this as a second, oh, the mug. This is my favorite mug of all time. Um, this is my second, second mug of this. The first one, the handle broke and we ended up finding a replacement like four years later. So, um, but yeah, if this is something you're interested in, definitely give a like, subscribe. I may pull this off into a second channel just for the sake of keeping my first channel that I was starting to build was more around like mom things and parenting and cloth diapering, which hasn't really, I haven't really felt very inspired to create on that channel, which is or this channel for those reasons, which is why I haven't posted anything. Um, and then the most recent posts that I had, aside from this video and the previous update video, were just, you know, knitting up a blank and doing a review on a knitting machine. So, I mean, I'm feeling much more inspired in this realm than I am in the whole mom parenting realm. So I'm thinking, like it, I like it. I'm thinking I'm enjoying. So let's just get into it. So as far as life updates or anything crazy, nothing's happening. It's just normal every day. Mom life. Cece's playing on her iPad. Parenting win. Hashtag parenting win right there. Uh, Tucker is napping and so I can film. Um, so if you hear any like fiddly doos in the background, we shouldn't have any interruptions because the iPad is very engrossing for her. Um, so you'll hear in the background some like singing or weird music that's her favorite game but yeah other than that there's not much going on i've been doing some work for a local photographer which is one piece that i have in my finished my finished work um and then i'm all i also do consignment for a boutique in in sherman oaks california which is earth baby boutique i'll leave a link below and i'll put a link in the cards for their boutique um, but I do, you know, more parenting oriented things, gifting things that I, I crochet. So I have to get some stuff out to them this week. 
by Friday and right now today is Tuesday. So I will just get into it and I'll start with my works in progress. Uh, I don't have a ton in progress right now because I'm focusing on just getting things out for Earth Baby. But one thing I wanted to show you is this. This is the beginnings of a bowl. Uh, I make these out of t-shirt yarn and this is crochet. This is um, single crochet. And what I do is I build the bowl up to its sides and it creates this lovely decorative bowl um, to gift in and also to store, you know, things in your child's room or even in your own room. It's really not limited to children's things, but this color, uh, I think it's called Fruity Pebbles. It's uh, very colorful and very childlike. So I like to create these. So I have this in progress. This is my big uh, t-shirt barf. That's actually, you know, a full hank or cake. I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> it's a big wound up cylinder of t-shirt yarn. Um, so that is my work in progress. Uh, as far as finished works, we'll start with this. If you follow me on Instagram, um, I'm as little bean crochet on Instagram, so I'll put a link and I'll put the text right here. Um, this is a fire department hat and this is actually not for a child. This is for a dog. <laughs> um, a local photographer, he was doing, you know, a photo shoot in a fire truck with a puppy and he asked me, can you make this but for a puppy? Maybe put an elastic? I said, sure, I can do that. So this is the fire helmet that I created. I stitched in just hand sewn um, some elastic in there to keep it on the head of the puppy. But he should be picking this up this week. I'm not sure if the photo shoot will actually take place because apparently there was some controversy with whether it would be like actually happening because the the person who had the puppy ended up returning the puppy and then taking the puppy back and then returning the puppy which I don't agree with but <laughs> I made this hat so if they do a photo shoot the hat, hat will be created this is made out of the Cascade um, alpaca blend so it's wool and alpaca it makes me extremely itchy I cannot cannot to wear alpaca and I hate working with it but um, it was the perfect color it was the exact color he wanted this like deeper reddish color red brown um, but yeah this is just acrylic and cotton and elastic that's what it's made of so I didn't use a pattern I just made this pattern of myself and it was good enough for what we needed. So that's one finished object. And then this is my most exciting object. I'm so excited for this. Ready? Dun, da, da, da. So I finished my Simple Scallops shawl. I used, I stopped before I got to the full 100 grams of the skein, but I, I used around like 70, between 73 and 75. Uh, grams of yarn. This is my everyday sock yarn in the colorway Flowers for Dobby. I've been lovingly calling this my Dobby shawl. But I blocked this yesterday and look at that. It's so hard to see on like a lighter background. You can see there's a mistake here, but it came out so nice. The lacing was so worth the tedium of working on this project. I felt so incredibly bored working on this because it's the same thing over and over and over again and you're just getting longer and longer and longer um, with each pass so you work on the shawl upside down so you're beginning at one side going up to the point of the triangle and down and then turning the corner going up the triangle and down so you're you're working the longest distance that you possibly can work on a triangle which is okay, it makes the back of the shawl nice and level, easy to block, especially if your gauge is correct, but it's it was just very tedious. So here is the finished shawl and the detailing. 
Um, I'll leave a link to the pattern. I'll leave a link up here in the cards. I'll put a link down in the description for the pattern. This is a paid pattern. I think it's Kristen Ashmore, and it, it is the Simple Scallop Shawl. I am not a shawl wearer, which is why another reason I was happy to not do it as a shawl. I did it more as a scarf. Um, it can be worn as a shawl. It comes down probably mid-back on me, and it's certainly long enough to wrap. So I could do either way, but pretty so pretty I'm so happy I finished it um but yeah that was an accomplishment for me yesterday it was my first piece that I've ever blocked really um because crochet work is so so much more rigid than um the knit work so like things like scarves or hats you don't usually need to block it unless you have some problems with your tension or your gauge so I've never really had to block anything. I usually make hats to size. They fit well. They have, you know, a relative amount of stretch based on the stitches I use. And um, so I was very proud that I blocked this out. I did wet blocking, wet it down, pinned it out, stretched it out, opened the lace, and when it dried, it stayed, and it was just brilliant. Um, so it's absolutely gorgeous. This was worked in sock weight yarn. You can do this type of patterning if you have purchased the pattern or you know of the pattern and you do end up purchasing it. You really can work in any weight that you want. You can make it any size that you want because it's not something where you're having to fit the length of your arm or fit the width of your bust line or your torso length. You know, it's something that's just kind of amorphous. You can wrap it around your body um, and as long as you're using a larger hook than is required for your yarn. So this was worked on an eye hook, which is five and a half millimeters, if I remember correctly. Um, and this is sock weight yarn, which you usually work on a D hook or lower uh, for socks. <laughs> or if you're doing some really fine, like amigurumi type work. So that's it. That's the scarf. Um, Hopefully you guys like it. I really enjoyed this. So that's all I had um, this week for works in progress and finished pieces. But I feel like this is like the most, most awesome thing. So I wanted to get into a little bit of dyeing um, news and updates. Oh, oh, I forgot. Okay, so I have been watching Stitching the High Notes. Hello hello and she definitely inspired me to share this so um her user on instagram is opera joe and she does the stitching the high notes podcast which again i'll leave a link for all the podcasts that i've mentioned below so you should check them out if you're into this type of thing but she was showing off her comic-con cosplay costume that she was creating um she posted it up on instagram and then she also showed it in her podcast this week so we'll do this first so i wanted to show my comic-con costume from a couple of years ago so as most of you know i've had you know two kids in the last three years my daughter will be three in september my son will be one in august and when cc was born um like the year after she was born so 2014 we my husband and i were able to go to comic-con uh in boston boston comic-con and it was so fun and i worked on this costume probably for a week straight it was the only thing i wanted to do i bought all the supplies for it i bought the i got templates for it and um you know it was just screaming to me i'm like i have to make this costume and bonus points for anybody who can name who this is so this was my costume it's still in wonderful condition so i will be wearing it again whenever i can get out to comic-con um but i created this headpiece, which is attached to, let's see. Oh, I can I get on frame? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, there I am. Uh, which is attached to this mysterious fabric. This fabric, I am not sure what it's called, but it's that really silky synthetic polyester fabric that is, this is so big. Uh, <laughs> is um, used in Halloween costumes for like capes and things like that but I wanted something that was really 
black, really, you know, not translucent, so kind of opaque, and something that was like really heavy drape, so that when I wore it, I was very, um, so it followed the line of the costume. So this is No Face from um, the Miyazaki film um, Spirited Away. And he is awesome. <laughs> so he's a character, he doesn't speak. He's a spirit in the movie and he is, I don't know how to call, what to call him, if he's like a demon or, but he, what happens is he, he feeds off of people's greed and he he it's, he always offers things and if you take it from him then you know he eats you and you become part of him and he becomes this in, like all like grotesque creature with all like the worst things about all the people people characters who are in the bathhouse and so when he encounters Chihiro he like she doesn't take things from him and she says no I don't need those things thank you I'll do it on my own I'll do you know I'll make this bath on my own and they end up becoming kind of friends and when he finally comes down from this whole entire like I've possessed everybody in the bathhouse he actually is quite docile and he likes you know to do things so he ends up going with uh, Zaniba who is Yubaba's sister she lives in Swamp Bottom and he ends up living with her so anyway <laughs> this is no face and so when I dressed up as no I'll put this down now. when I put dressed up as no face for comic-con I had you know my whole costume so I had the robe the mask with the robe and so I was like taller than I normally am I'm pretty sure I'm five foot two and um, I have the mouth is where my eyes are and then I had elbow length gloves. And then what I was carrying around, I carried around Rolo candies. So like the little individually gold wrapped Rolo candies, which look just like the little gold pieces that he gives away. And so it was just so fun to stand there and just offer this gold to people. And everyone's like, no thank you, no thank you, no thank you. So it was really funny, I, I geeked out about it. So I was very excited. So the next time we go to Comic-Con, I will be wearing that, but it probably won't be this year, um, only because Tucker is still a little too small. And it's a lot of work to leave two children with uh, my husband's parents. So anyway, so that's the crafting that I did. Underneath is just this Frankenstein of a creation using like foam blocks and like elastic bands and Velcro. And it was a lot of work, but the template, I actually, for the mask, this was a template that I found online. And so this is made of crafting foam and I um, cut it out of the crafting foam, traced it and painted it. So this is just, you know, flat acrylic paint, nothing crazy. I painted all the details. This is where my eyes would be. And the only thing that's missing back here is I really wanted to have like a black mesh so that I could see out, but nobody really could see in because in the photos that I have, where you know you're taking pictures with people, you can still see my eyes. It's a little creepy to see my eyes through his mouth, but um, if you look really closely in the photos, you can see it. So I'll try. I'll insert some pictures here. Um, this is a photo of me and my husband standing in line, which was really fun. It was so hot. Um, and then this photo is me in the trash compactor. We have friends who are part of the 501st and they brought the trash compactor to Boston Comic Con that year. I'm pretty sure they do it probably most every year, but I just did this crazy like cross fandom standing in the garbage compactor as no face. It was really fun. So, okay. <laughs> I may cut some of that out. I don't know. Uh, but I was super excited to make that piece and you know I keep it all in the closet away from the kids and, like I'm very proud of it so uh, hopefully you enjoyed that all right let's go into yarn stuff so here's my little dye notebook I have been very good lately <laughs> about writing down everything that I'm doing so for me dying is a new adventure it's something that I've only started it feels a lot longer than this but only about a month ago and only in the last couple of weeks have I really launched out colorways and different products for my shop and different types of yarn different um, colors of yarn but I wanted to share that I have this lovely notebook I think I got it out like a Hallmark store or Michaels or Staples or something but it is the Arabian Nights collection from Studio C. 
book, which is really pretty. And then inside here, written in this mysterious section, um, are my recipes. So I have my recipe for my tonal yarns, uh, for my dye stock, uh, for my hand painting, and for gradients, which I am brainstorming some gradients to come to my shop, which will be nice. Then I have a section for kettle dyeing, um, including charts for where I place colors and the concentrations of colors. And then I also have another section here, which is for my hand painted yarns. So I have like, I don't want to show too much, but I have, you know, how I lay the skein out and where I place the colors on the skein when I hand paint. So that's that. I've been working on this quite a bit and especially this morning I think I posted up on Instagram this morning about it like sitting in my jammies with my coffee just enjoying writing down all my formulas but I had a lot more intricate things going on than I thought I did and I'm really interested to do some gradients because I really want to start working instead of just with the powders and mixing up you know I want to be able to keep some dye stock aside so I have been binge watching the dyer's notebook um, and just kind of going back and back and back to see and find some of her tips and tricks for storing dye stock and you know the methods that she uses to mix because I like her she's really cool um I'll link her below obviously but um you know she's a pretty well established dyer she does a lot of self striping yarns her yarns are absolutely beautiful like between her Kristen from Volen Vine Yarns, Lauren from Lolo Did It Yarns, like there are so many people in this community that I aspire to be like and just have these beautiful creations that just come from me that are inspired by my day-to-day -day life or, you know, that are just beautiful color combinations that, you know, you haven't seen in a while or that, you know, are just unique to me, inspired by things that I love, which is why... I called my yarn line Little Bean Loves Hand Painted Yarn because I wanted it to be things that I love and things that a lot of people love uh, brought out in yarn form and will help inspire you to create things uh, with it, whether it's based on a certain theme. So right now I've been working a lot in Harry Potter themed yarns and that's been a real calling to me um, to, you know, like Little Bean Loves Harry Potter, Little Bean Loves Marblehead, like my first yarns, that the colorways that you've seen, like shipping. Um, this is Coastal Sunshine. This is Old Town. They're very similar colorways. This is not reskained. This is reskained. These are actually the first run of these colors. Uh, I do have these up in my shop. There are two of each one. I have three, three yarns left from my original dyes. These are 100% merino wool, not superwash. Um, but this is reskained. This is just normal. Um, Old Town has some purples in it and some more uh, green tones. And then this is literally yellow, blue, and aqua. And they mix together to make these gorgeous greens. So um, anyway, so that was the inspiration for the name of my yarn line because my business is Little Bean Crochet. That's who I've been on the web for quite some time. Um, my little crochet shop. I've kind of dipped my toe into different things, crafting different things, but just like knitting or any other type of craft, you kind of hit a wall at some point where you just don't feel inspired anymore. You're making the same things over and over again. You're coming up with new ideas and either they are a hit and people love them or some people are like, wah, wah, like, how much marketing can you do for the same, you know, the same beanie that you've been creating for the last like four years? Just it, it, it just felt a, lot, a little bit humdrum to me, which is why I really got into dyeing because I'm like, you know what? This is something I've always liked. I have a minor in fine arts and I did a lot of painting and drawing. I mean, if you see in my house, like we have, if. I don't know if you've watched any of my other videos, but like you can see we just have paintings around the house. Some of them are ones that we've done, some of them are some that friends have done, but it's something that kind of permeates my life at least. Um, working with colors and textures and just, you know, kind of bringing out the best of whatever medium I'm working in. So I really, I really love wool yarns and I really 
wanted to try it and I was so afraid that it was going to be the most difficult thing and I wouldn't be able to do it and I wouldn't be able to invest time and money especially with the kids and I'm a stay-at-home mom so um, so really the inspiration for my yarn line was coming out of this kind of funk in my business and you know wanting to express myself in a different way and share with other people the things that I love and really inspire other fiber artists whether you're a knitter crochet or spinner you know if you felt things if you just take yarn and make rugs out of it I don't know you know other people who work in fiber mediums to be inspired to create things with the yarns that I'm making and so I'm hoping that I'm achieving that and um, but yeah I do love hand painted yarn and I find it's so weird let's talk a little bit so in the crochet community like it's a lot of people just working with craft store yarns and the same type of patterns. And I feel like, I don't know if there's really a huge chunk of the world missing out on handmade yarns and like hand painted yarns, or if it's, I don't know, I find like it's much more heavily saturated in the knitting community. And it's really opened up my eyes because I've always worked in whatever. I buy independently dyed yarns, I buy commercial yarns, I buy wool, I buy t-shirt yarn. Like if you if you watch my last update, you know, I have tons of yarn. I love to experiment and to do things that are different and I feel like so many crocheters are just, they're working in baby gear and they're making baby blankets and they're using Red Heart Soft or they're using Karen Super Soft and like it's just this like it's just uninspiring. Like how many times can you work with the same colors or the same medium and you know, be okay with it? I mean, you're just working in the same white yarn, doing the same things over and over again. And like, I feel like not a lot of crocheters, at least the ones that I'm connected with, use independently dyed yarns and use yarns that are inspiring, that are different, that aren't the norm. And so I really, I want to find people who are like me, who like to do things like this, where you can't find this yarn in a store. You can't find this color and how it patterns up in a store because I made it, <laughs> you know? And, and like the commercial yarns, especially with crochet, I find they don't stitch up very nicely for crochet. Crocheting is such a unique technique, you know, knitting things look so much nicer and like crochet I feel like commercial yarns look like block 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 like all the colors it's just blocks of color and it doesn't look nice it doesn't look it doesn't look professional it doesn't look as high quality as it would if you knit the same the same exact skein of commercial yarn but like with hand dyed yarns I feel like there's so much more variation in color, in tone, in the length of yarn that has the specific color in it and it makes crochet so much more interesting and so much more fun to look at. It just makes it feel nicer to me at least. I don't know if I'm the only one who feels this way if I'm like this weirdo who's like oh I don't like commercial yarns. but. But like it's just kind of opened my mind to other things because I used to hate variegated skeins of yarn. I never liked work working with variegated skeins in crochet and it was because of this whole pooling thing that happens in crochet where you just have these swaths of color. So like to get around that I would use two strands of yarn, I'd use a solid and a variegated so that at least it broke up the, the yarn. If I can find a picture, I'll put up a picture here of this pink beanie that I did with, you know, commercial, um, I think it was Unforgettable, Red Heart Unforgettable. Oh, I don't know. Uh, but it was this brown pink, it was like a Neapolitan ice cream. But like I started stitching up with it and it literally was just these blocks of color that kind of like did the zigzag up the hat. And I'm like, this is, just doesn't look nice to me. Like I don't want to wear this. Why would somebody else want to wear this? So I like double stranded it and I did it and it came out kind of nice and I ended up donating that to an auction, a uh, fundraising auction for, I think it was Red Nose Day. But um, yeah, it was just, I don't know, I just feel uninspired by commercial yarns because they're so much the same. Like I could get, I could dye two skeins of this colorway and get two different feels out of the same formulations of dye, placing the dye in the same 
manner in the pot. Like you're gonna get different results and different feelings, but it's not gonna be this like block, 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 block of color. Like the colors are gonna blend more together. You're gonna have a, a much different feel using something like this versus using commercial yarn in crochet. In knit, I feel like it's a little different because you're really weaving, you're weaving the fabric together and you're not creating these like building bricks, like knitting, I feel like it's more this coming together of the yarn where you're just weaving the yarn in and out of itself. And it's so simple and it's so beautiful and it makes this lovely stretching fabric. And crochet, I feel like it's just knots on knots and you're building this block and just turns into bricks and it's just not attractive. <laughs> so like that's, that's really part of the reason why I decided to dye my own yarn, one, for my own personal use, and two, to inspire other people who are like me, who don't like commercial yarns, who are so bored by what's out there. Like, to use something like this, this is not going to look like a commercial yarn. This is going to look interesting. This is going to be fun. I actually might pull this colorway off of the shop and just stitch this up myself into a shawl just to see how it looks, but it's just so gorgeous. You don't get these things in the craft store. I'm sorry, you just don't. And you don't get things that are like this that look nice when you crochet it. <sighs> anyway, I digress. I digress, I've gone on and on. But um, anyway, so I wanted to show you a little bit of the difference. So a lot of my yarns, I don't reskein. So this yarn died up, it was in the kettle, I'll pull the sleeve off. So this is just Malabrigo Merino Worsted. It's not anything special. Like it's just a hank of yarn that I dyed. This is what it looked like coming out of the kettle. Hanked it up. This is what it looks like hanked up. Right? You get this beautiful blending of color. You can see some white spaces. Now this colorway is Old Town. This is a very similar colorway, but there's a lot more variations of green and there's some plum color in here. Now, this skein looked very much like this skein looked very much like this skein, except had some purples in it and some deeper tones of green, but it looked like this, you know, very splotchy, very, um, you know, out of the kettle look, which I like. I think it looks very interesting. Uh, but to see how a colorway will work up in knit or crochet, if you reskein it, I reskeined this because I had some tangles and I didn't want to sell it tangled up. So, which is good business practice, everybody. Uh, I've gotten some tangled skeins before and it's so frustrating. So if you can, if you see you have a tangle and you can't get it undone, just reskein it. Like it makes a, a much more pleasurable experience for the customer. So um, this is what the colorway looks like all wound up and it's just so dynamic. We have different types of colors. We have plum and blue and yellow and green and even some like orange. That must have been from the plum and the yellow mixing. Uh, but it's not gonna stitch up like block, 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 block of color. It's going to be this, this beautiful varied fabric. So um, this is what reskeining looks like. So if you ever see yarns that look like this or look like this, they're the same. The yarn that looks like this did once look like this, but the person who's selling it has reskeined it so you can see the colors um, a lot better. I don't typically reskein my yarn. Um, anybody who's looked in my shop can see that most of my skeins are just out of the pot because I like how it looks right out of the pot. Um, but it is easier to see what a colorway, like how much white, because you might be intimidated and be like, oh my gosh, there's so much white in the skein, but like this skein has the exact same amount of white as this skein. No lie. Before I reskeined it, it looked a lot like this. It had a bunch of undyed portions or lightly dyed portions, and it turns into this. So don't be intimidated. If you see a skein that's extremely colorful and has some patches of white, like for me as a crocheter, I hate yarns that are white. I, I would hate them. I would just leave them. I don't want to deal with it. I'd rather just have blocks of color. I don't want to have just bare yarn because it just comes out like block, block, block and doesn't look nice. Looks blah. So I used to be intimidated by things like this, but with independently dyed yarns and kettle dyed, hand painted yarns, usually if you're going for a true variegated skein, having bits of white like this is not is not the end of your project. You know, it really brings a new lightness to your yarn. Um, anyway, I digress. <laughs> 
I don't know why I was talking about that. I just, I just felt it necessary to talk about reskaining because for me as a consumer, before I really got into this whole arena and like learning about independently dyed yarns and kettle dyeing and different methods of hand dyeing, I would have looked at a skein like this and been like, there's no way I'm gonna like that. No way. But it really is like this. And it's not, it's not like your typical variegated skein that you get at a commercial yarn store. It's a, a skein that's truly random. It's truly varied. And like you have, you know, certain areas where colors will pool or blend in a certain way, but it's not, it's not commercially dyed. When you hand paint a yarn, you lay it out on the table, you're placing colors in certain areas, you're gonna have more um, repeats that are consistent and more pooling. So I'll put a picture here or pop it on the screen of a shawl that I did. I did the classy bitch shawl by Mama Chi crochet designs, which it's a very simple stitch. It's beautiful, but I did it in this colorway that I did called Peach Highlands, which is not up in my shop, um, but it's more of a pooling colorway because I, the way I dyed it was a dip dye. So I took the yarn in the skein and I dipped it into the pot so that the bottom was darker, the top was lighter, I layered different colors on it, I hand painted on it. And because this the skein was consistently dyed, so only, so if I unwind this, so the bottom portion of the skein was this orange color, then it faded to a peach, and then it has some golden pink peach tones up at the top. So it was a regular pattern. It did pool, but it didn't pool in the way that a normal variegated skein pools because it wasn't like purple plus brown plus white, which turns into like three colors just repeated, repeated, repeated. Like it was like tones of the same color, which was much more pleasing to the eye and much more pleasing to stitch. Anyway, I digress. I digress. If you buy a variegated skein for you crocheters out there and it's independently dyed, kettle dyed, you're going to end up with a blend of color. You're not going to end up with like a block, a block, a block, a block of color. That's the main message. <laughs> but my inspiration for starting this yarn line really was that. It was really, I was unhappy with what I was getting and I wanted to do something different, something really fun, and something for myself. Now let's talk new yarn. So this is deliciously sparkly, but this is the Lost Diadem of Rowena Ravenclaw. Hold on, Hank, this. This is Kettle Dine. Look at that. It's just so gorgeous. Look at the speckles. We've got speckles of color, so nice deep spots of color throughout. It's this gray tonal with speckled on uh, blue, which is are the colors of Ravenclaw and also the colors of her diadem, her tiara. But it's just, oh my god. I feel so bad because like I just want to keep all this yarn, but I can't keep it. I have to sell some of this. <laughs> um, but I dye something up and I'm like, mm, I really could use it for this and for this and for this and for this. <laughs> But I do have two hanks for sale. This is one of them. It is on the sparkle base. Uh, I have it diagrammed how I did it, so I can repeat it. I, I think I put it up as a repeating colorway, a dye to order colorway. But look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So if you're looking for this, it is still up for sale in my Etsy shop. I only just listed it yesterday. I think as far as I'm posting this, that both hanks are still available. But if you're feeling inspired by Harry Potter, Check it out. It's quite lovely. It was quite fun to dye. So I'm excited to dye it again. Um, put the right sleeve on the right yarn. So anyway, I was feeling super inspired to share everything today. I hope you enjoyed this little chit chat. I hope you didn't mind my little tangent because I tend to go on tangents. It's just, just how it goes. Um, I'm now running into close to 40 minutes. Uh, I hope I didn't bore you too much. So if you like this, if you're interested in seeing it, give a like so I know, subscribe. Um, I'm definitely thinking about pushing this content to another channel so that um, the people who are really interested in this specific content will be flooded by any other content that I choose to post. Um, and I'll try and link everything that I can down in the description box. Um, the 
the cards in the corner, if you see the little I that's in the corner of the screen here, if you click on that, there are specific links that will take you to different um, different websites or um, to different channels on YouTube. And um, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.